Hi everybody, this is Gerdy van Boert at Dare Greatly Coaching and I'd like to talk to you guys about feeling like an imposter and pretty much all the time because that is a feeling I am very familiar with. I used to feel like it all the time. Well, perhaps. So I know I am not the only one who've ever, who's ever felt like this. I know there's lots of people who feel like that. And I just want to take you back a little bit to uh, when I was feeling like that. I felt I was in corporate and um, I was doing a job I was never really passionate about. I was pretty good at it, but I was not like my colleagues and studying my profession as uh, as they were. So that perhaps contributed contributed to the feeling of not knowing sufficient, not being capable enough. But let me take back a little bit further. I started out as um, with a degree in facility management and I had difficulty finding a job. When I got out of uh, college, the market job market was really down, was rather bad in the in the Netherlands. So it was I had a hard time finding a job. And eventually I did find a job and I started all the way at the bottom of the company I was working for, which was fine because I thought I'll do this for a little while and I'll find out what it is that I really want to be doing. So I started out um, as a secretarial assistant and building manager but very quickly i moved up uh, a step on the ladder and i became an assistant project uh, project leader now, as such as the name says you help out project leaders and project managers which was great because i could lean on those people if i didn't know anything that was fine i was just an assistant and i could ask the project leader or i could refer clients to the project manager whatever but I didn't necessarily know the answers. I didn't necessarily need to know the answers. After all, I was an assistant. But I slowly moved up the ladder and I became a project leader. Luckily, in that position, I still had somebody I could lean on. So if I didn't know anything, I didn't necessarily have to say so. But uh, I could still go to my project manager and say, well, uh, could you help me with this, please? Even... In that position, though, I was every now and again given the responsibility, the day-to-day -day responsibility in any case, for projects. And that meant that I had to deal with clients by myself. And I very often had the feeling that I was reading the same book my client was, just um, one chapter ahead of him. And as long as I kept reading, that was fine. You know, The, the client didn't have to know that I was reading the same book he was. And not literally, of course, but still, um, as long as I kept ahead of him and I gave him the answers that he expected of me, everything was fine. But it was kind of a disconcerting feeling. It didn't make me feel really secure in what, it, what, what I was doing. And now I could have, of course, thrown myself into studying the subject that I was working in. But somehow I couldn't get myself to do that. In any case... Apparently, I wasn't as bad at my job as I, th I thought myself to be because I got promoted and um, after a couple of years of project leadership, I became a project manager and consultant, which meant that those people I had been leaning on whenever I felt it was necessary were all of a sudden my colleagues and I was the one that was expected all of a sudden to be acting like somebody that could be lent upon, which was... In some ways, uh, I was capable of doing that. But in other ways, it was adding to my own insecurities. Because now, when I had something where I didn't know an answer, when I felt insecure, I couldn't just come out and say it and say to my project manager, I don't know how to do this. Do you? Can you help me here? I'd, how did you solve this problem before? I somehow... I felt now I needed to know it all. And of course, I didn't know it all. And what I didn't realize is that my colleagues didn't know it all either. Nobody knows it all. And lots of people feel like they are an imposter and a fraud. And perhaps I um, exaggerated a bit when I said 
I felt like that all the time, but I felt like it for a lot of the time, especially when I was in my role as project manager. I had other roles in the company as well. I was the uh, a member and later the chairperson of the employees council, and I was totally secure in that position. But being in that, in my actual position, in the actual work I did, I never really felt comfortable. So feeling like you're one chapter ahead, or sometimes I felt even like I was just a page ahead of the people I was working for and working with, is not a good place to be in. It makes, it makes for a lot of stress and it makes for, um, in my case, in any case, for being afraid all the time. And that takes an enormous amount of energy. And the funny thing was, looking back at it, is that nobody knew this. Nobody even suspected it. I was talking to my former uh, boss, the, he's still the director of the company I used to work for, and he told me he never had a clue. He never for one minute suspected that I felt this that way. And I know from talking to others, especially from talking to other women, that they too have this feeling, that they too have the experience of every of feeling like an imposter. And I also know, um, know it doesn't help that, at least in the Netherlands, it's not very common to come out and say, well, I'm sorry, I don't know this. Uh, it's, it's often considered a sign of weakness and you don't show weakness in the corporate environment. At least not I feel in the, uh, or felt in the environment that I worked in, it felt rather, I don't know, dangerous almost to do that. It's, it's, it wasn't a safe thing to do to say, I don't know that I think you'd better go and ask somebody else to do this particular task or to, um, or to tell a client, um, I'm sorry, I don't know that I have, to, I have to go back and figure it out even though there were times when you could actually say that because the client himself could understand that you could possibly know this. Oftentimes I felt more like I was just sort of skating through the whole thing and not really doing it. So at some point, um, it had just taken up too much energy. I always call it my Oscar winning performance, but you can't play a role all the time. So it's a, when I got to that point, that's when I decided that I was um, done being afraid. I was done going to uh, to, to play at um, enjoying going to conferences. I actually I was bored out of my skull really when I was doing when I had to go to conferences just to listen to people talk about project management or facility management. I can even remember falling asleep during one of them. And luckily my colleague nudged me awake, but you know, it tells me, it's, it can tell you how interested I was in the subject. And um, I, I, I was also done by buy, with buying books about facility management or project management and never reading them, you know, just because I was expected to have those kinds of books on the bookshelf. So, when I said, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with being afraid of being found out. I'm done with um, being afraid not to live up to, to what people expect of me as a project manager, expect of me as a professional. You know, Sometimes you can just say that you don't know something or sometimes you just have to, I had to acknowledge that this is not what I want to be doing. I don't care if... I don't, I just don't care about these things. And I was definitely done with not, of, with being afraid of uh, going my own way, go, you know, forging my own path. So that's when I decided to figure it all, to figure out what it was that I want to be doing. But also what I found was it wasn't half as scary as I always had thought it would be. I always thought I need the security of a steady job. I always thought I want to know where my next paycheck is coming from. I always thought I want a paycheck in the first place. It turns out I don't. I, I'm not 
afraid anymore of not knowing where my next paycheck is coming from. I'm not afraid of not having a steady job. I'm not afraid of not necessarily knowing what my pension is going to look like. Sure, I still pay into a pension fund, not as much as I used to, but I'm much more concerned about what is the quality of life right now. And yes, I think you, it's good to look into the future a little bit, but at the same time, all that security that I was holding on to while I was being so afraid, that wasn't real security. Who these days can say they have a job for life? I, I don't think there's anybody who can honestly say they have a job for life, not even if you're working for the government. And I don't care where you are working for the government. Government do layoffs all the time. Big corporations that used to offer you a job for life do layoffs all the time. And not just little ones, big ones too. So I don't believe anymore in that story, that fable of finding a job and staying with it for life. People change jobs all the time and if you don't change jobs sometimes you get forced to change jobs because your company is changing and i've i've become pretty much unemployable i think i don't think i want to and could work for an uh, um, for somebody again in a corporate role ever again i don't really want to but that's my story and that's what i figured out when i stopped being afraid so if you recognize anything in this story, in, in, if you've ever felt like an imposter all the time, if you ever, or not even all the time, but if you have more occasions than you'd like where you feel like an imposter, where you feel like you're just a couple of pages, perhaps a chapter at the most ahead of some of everybody else that is reading the same book and you are supposed to be people uh, leading these people consulting these people uh, doing the project for them then perhaps it is time to take a good look at your life and see what it is that you can change about it so you can stop being afraid all the time it might just be that you are actually good at what you do but if you know just find somebody excuse me, find somebody that you can talk to and that you can talk to about that feeling that you have of being a fraud and being an imposter. If you're doing something you're not passionate about and that's why you're not keeping up with uh, uh, literature in your uh, speciality, in your, in your major, in, um, you know, and if you're, your heart is really look at uh, yearning to do something else then find out what that is and if you uh, don't know where to start finding that out and if you don't know if you, um, if you if you can make that into a career or into a job go find help with that you could find a coach find a job consultant find any anyone anybody that could help you with that you could also enroll in the webinar that i'm doing later this week on friday it's called a live your, live your own webinar live your own life webinar and this is the address where you can find it where you can sign up for it and it's all geared to finding out to help you find out what is truly important to you and how you can use that to create to start living your own life and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to quit your job that you have to start doing something completely different but it does help you figure out okay these are the things that are really really important to me and that i really want to have in my life or this is the measuring stick that i want to use when i take decisions that affect my life so I'd love to hear from you and what you think about it. If you ever feel like an imposter, if it's like all the time or if it's just some of the time and how that makes you feel, if you, uh, what you do about it, if you maybe you felt like this in the past and you don't feel like it anymore. So, you know, share how you overcame that feeling because others will be helped by that. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Like I said, my name is Gerdy Verwoerd. You can find me at daregreatlycoaching.com. And I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you next time and hopefully 
likely I'll be somewhere outside on the mountain because uh, I'll be ne- I'll be back or I'll try to be back next Thursday. Same time, not the same place. Uh, and until then, go check out the webinar. Again, this is the web- this is the address where you can find the webinar. And um, otherwise, I'll talk to you again uh, on Thursday. Have a great one. Go there greatly. Bye bye.